Hey guys, thanks for stopping by my channel today. My name is Gina. I believe there's more to life than looking good, but you've got to look good too. So today will be pretty much a look good video. Um, I'm gonna go through some of my makeup empties only. Uh, I do have a whole separate drawer full of hair and skincare um, empties, but yet again, don't wanna be here till tomorrow. So I split it into makeup and then all the other stuff. So today will be makeup. Um, I so recently did a, um, kind of beauty favorites that I was loving at the moment video. I will link that. Um, but I just did that so recently and it's the beginning of December. And so I figured I don't really want to do a monthly favorites already so quick, but I figured this is like alternate universe monthly favorites because these are a lot of products since they're empty. I've actually used them up because I do not ever commit to using things up like project pan or I don't know, project bottle or whatever. Um, life is too short to use a product that you don't like. And so if I've finished something, pretty much there's a good chance I'll like it. So this is kind of like my collection of empty favorites. <laughs> that sounded so cold. <laughs> okay, so I have this really cute little Santa basket full of my makeup empties. Um, I'm gonna leave actually the playlist of all of my previous empties videos because there are some products that I'm going to mention that I've mentioned many times before. And I... I thought about cutting them out because it's like, okay, really, how many times are you going to talk about it? So I'm really not going to talk about those particular products, but I am going to let you know if it's a repeater that I'm actually still using it. So, um, yeah, here we go. The first guy sitting right on top is by L'Oreal. It's the makeup setting spray, the, um, pro, the infallible pro spray and set makeup extender setting spray. Um, I like this. Of all the ones at the drugstore, I also like the one by Milani, but I definitely like this one since it's kind of that pro infallible. I do find that it gives me long wear. I really don't feel like makeup sprays really, I don't feel like any of them do a lot. I do like the one by Urban Decay All Nighter. I heard rumor that the same company makes the Urban Decay All Nighter as makes um, this uh, one by L'Oreal. Uh, I haven't seen like the contract to indicate that, but if that is the case, that's phenomenal. It's about half the price for the same size as the Urban Decay. I primarily use setting sprays and I'm not gonna use a dewy one. Um, you know, I want one that's got long-term because I do have combo to oily skin with some dry patches, go figure. Um, but I really like the way a makeup setting spray will kind of blend your makeup together, like kind of when you're done and will take away that like chalkiness of a powder. So. Drugstore wise, I think that one is phenomenal. Um, so I made this whole big thing about how I don't like to finish that. I don't like to finish things that I don't like. And here's something I didn't finish. Um, this is by Milani. This is the Prime Shield Face Primer. It is mattifying and pore minimizing and oil free. I just wasn't that impressed. There are definitely better primers out there that accomplish both of those things. I love the... Um, Soap and Glory, one heck of a blot when it comes to mattifying. And so I wanted to give this a try. Drugstore, it's not bad. Like if you don't have like super oily skin, I bet this would work really nicely. But for my oily sections, it wasn't all that great. But conveniently, I do have another primer that I like sitting right on top. And this bad boy, he was squeezed within an inch of his life. <laughs> That's an awful phrase. That, why would we even want to consistently and regularly say something like that? That was that we just squeezed this guy like a tube of toothpaste. How about that? This is by Hylamide. It is the matte 12, huh? 12 hour visible oil blocker and pore vanisher. I really like this. I got this off of Amazon. It's about 20 bucks. So it's not entirely like inexpensive, but kind of run in the mill when it comes to primers because there are definitely some other primers that are like 30 and even into the $40 range. Um, I thought this did a nice job. I like the way it made my skin feel um, kind of as a makeup prep also, like not too tacky so that the foundation would stick, but also not too smooth and like dimethicone or whatever that oni thing is, silicone thing that is wind, winds up being in a lot of primers. Um, I don't like that because that just feels slippery. <laughs> Um, and so I, I definitely liked the finish that that primer gave. Right now I am using the Soap and Glory one heck of a blot and I'm using that up because I bought that on sale at Ulta. Um, but I will probably go back to that Hylamide. I definitely liked it. Um, I have by Kat Von D. I have her Locket Concealer Cream. This one is quite a bit thick. 
Um, what I loved about this particular line is that it was pretty full coverage. I do not like a, a even light to medium coverage um, under eye concealer because I have pretty significant under eye just kind of bags. Not really that they're red. They're just, I kind of have dark circles and like kind of shadows and bags underneath my eyes. Um, I love the Kat Von D color selection. Um, many of these concealers were um, olive toned, which I am. And when I want to kind of have a concealer that matches my skin tone or my foundation, um, this worked pretty nicely. I find that to be something that's lacking, like the Tarte Shape Tape. I did manage to find, I would probably compare that, compare this to that. I mean, they're exactly the same. No, I wouldn't say they were necessarily a dupe, but they're both kind of full coverage concealers. I find that the one, um, the Tarte Shape Tape doesn't, I was able to find a shade that's good for me, um, but the Kat Von D has a different range of colors than the Tarte Shape Tape does. By the way, I did a chit chat about Kat Von D and her identity as a person versus her identity as a brand. I will link that video. Um, that may help you decide whether or not you want to buy the Kat Von D Locket Cream Concealer. I used another Dior, Dior Show Blackout Mascara, repeater for sure, uh, which I won't go into then because I've talked about that one. I've talked about that one to death, which is another cruel and unusual um, kind of cliche that we regularly use. Oh my goodness. Okay. I bought for fun. <laughs> I've had this for so long. I'm primarily getting rid of it because I never finished it. But this is by because, I mean, I've had it for so long, it needs to go. Too Faced um, Queen Size Mascara. <laughs> I just couldn't help it. I love mascara. Look at the size of this wand. Look at the size of this wand, like, underneath my eye. This is huge. The other thing with it, I just dropped it. The other thing with it is that the bristles are actually really far apart. And they kind of have no chance of enveloping any of your lashes because your lashes are not nearly that thick like it's just not possible but I thought it was really cute mascara is one of my favorite beauty products ever and I just wanted to see if there was something um something to it I used um I finished up by NARS this has to be like my third one this is the um soft matte complete concealer I think I've talked about this before it I use the shade custard it like completely matches my skin tone. I have one in my bathroom. So like if I wake up in the morning and I don't like, let's say get ready right away, but I've got some blemishes and some just really nasty spots on my skin, but I don't feel like going to put on, you know, foundation, but I want to take pride in the way I look and I don't need to walk around looking like a hot mess. So I'll like, I have one of these in the bathroom and I'll just quickly spot conceal my face. I have one in my bag. I've got, I mean, I have them everywhere. I've got a couple backups already. Um, definitely love this concealer for um, spot concealing. I will use it on a whim underneath my eyes. It is a little bit thick. I find that I don't have to set it, um, but as such, it is a little thick, so make sure you use a very thin layer uh, just because you don't want to dry out your under eyes. Oh, hey, I didn't even realize I also have an Urban Decay All Nighter makeup setting spray, and I just talked about that to death, and so we're just gonna put that with the L'Oreal Infallible, and uh, hopefully they will get along. But another mascara. This is like an oldie but goodie. Nobody talks about this anymore. And I bought this fairly recently. This is by Maybelline. This is the Falsies Volume Express Mascara. I don't know. Something about this. It's a it's a slightly curved. It's a slightly curved wand. Um, it's kind of like the fuzzy bristles, so they're not plastic. Um, Maybelline mascara. Like I have no emotion over it, except this one. This one will give you really voluminous lashes while also giving you some length, which I think is probably what impressed me about it to begin with. Super inexpensive and just kind of one of those mascaras. Like I've used him up. Like I didn't run to the store to go get another one. Um, but like if there's ever a sale, like buy one, get one half off or something like that'll be like one of the Maybelline products that I'll like default to because I'm not really a super fan of their foundations and stuff. Um, but that mascara for some reason, it's just one of those curious wow, I really like you sort of mascaras. Okay. I've talked about this before. This is the Physicians, for Physicians? <laughs> Physicians Formula um, 2-in-1 Lash Boosting Eyeliner Serum. It is one of those um, bristle versus the felt tip. It's a bristle eyeliner. It's a dupe for the Kat Von D tattoo liner. I have said this was 
at times I believe I have said that it is better than the Kat Von D. I just went out and bought another Kat Von D one. The reason for that is uh, this does not regenerate fast enough. I keep finding that I put, and this is not just beyond this because I've, I've bought many of these. It is not just this one in particular, like it being a dud or something. Um, I will line one eye and then I'll go to the other eye. I'll shake it. Like I put the cap on thinking that that's like an instigator or something. Um, I'll go to line the other eye and it's dry. And yet the first eye goes on really wet, which I always just made an allowance for. But now I'm wondering if it puts all its oomph in the first line and then you try to go do the the second line, the other line, and it doesn't give you anything after that. So, um, when I'm on a budget, I will buy it because it's not awful, but at the same time, I'm like, uh, you have a couple character flaws and it really pisses me off. And when I'm trying to get ready really fast in the morning in particular, like I can't wait for you to like regenerate Like I'm hanging it upside down and I'm like trying to get it to go and it doesn't. 1,000 times I've talked about the Anastasia Brow Wiz. I have completely stocked up. I'm like good for the next like six months. Um, I love the tone. I love the consistency. And a lot of people like the uh, the Benefit equivalent pencil. I tried it. I feel they're similar. I like Anastasia better. And I'm tired of like sampling because I'm like nothing compares. Okay, I've been, oh my gosh. This is like the third primer. Um, I went through the Urban Decay Optical Illusion Complexion Primer. I was using this primarily around my mouth because I am dry and patchy there. And this has um, rosehip and argan oil in it, which are meant to be moisturizing. It's a little bit slippery and I find that it does, I finished it, I mean, it's huge. It's a little slippery. I find that it does adhere to dry patches a little bit. So I tend to moisturize with it a little bit more in the summer. Right now, it would not be possible because I'm a little dry patchy there, no matter what I do. Um, but it's a really, I, I enjoy it for, again, I like the consistency when um, I'm done applying it as far as the way you can apply foundation on top of it. I love that. But I don't know, it's a little bit, it's almost like a little pasty. I, I don't know. So it's moisturizing, but like priming at the same time. I'm clearly on the fence about it, and I am using um, other moisturizing primers right now. The Hangover RX I've been using, as well as the Marc Jacobs in the white bottle hydrating coconut infused primer, which is luxurious and silky. I happen to like that a lot. Okay, I also went through an Anastasia Brow Definer. This is the chunkier one. Um, this I just kind of used up. I much more appreciate the finer tip um, of the Brow Wiz over the Brow Definer. I have more brow products apparently. Oh yeah. So if I had to purchase, um, and I've been buying the Brow Wizzes on sale, like at Ulta when they had their 21 Days of Beauty, it went on sale like 50% and I buy it like at Sephora when it's 20%. But if you're on a budget, by far, the, the first runner up to that are the brow products by L'Oreal. So this is the Brow Stylist Definer. Looks exactly the same. Fine tip point, spoolie on the other end. Um, and I, there's just something about it that it isn't the Anastasia, but if I didn't know about the Anastasia, I would probably predominantly be using this. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Cause they're like so close just not financially. Normally speaking, that L'Oreal is about half the price. I also got the same, like the brow definer. This is the brow stylist shape and fill. So yeah, it's the one that's got the little triangular head. Um, I got pretty full brows as it is. And if I go in with too thick a pencil, like they just wind up looking like little caterpillars on top of my eyes. And so I do need the, the smaller um, precision of precision. I had trouble with physician, physician's formula and precision. I don't, that, that collection of letters does not seem to roll off my tongue very easily today. I don't know what that is. Anyway, Anastasia followed by L'Oreal, depending on your budget and your preference. Those two are, plus the L'Oreal doesn't have as good a color scheme, color selection. Um, but anyway, logged and noted. I went through, I have more mascara. I went through two more of the L'Oreal Telescopic lengthening mascaras, live and die by those. I am, I think the reason they still sell that is because I keep buying them all, honestly. Cause I go through that. I use a lot of coats every day. 
I probably go through a, a, a tube a month. And so, yes, I am. Oh, hi, number three. <laughs> I wonder if there are any more in here. There, maybe they're like multiplying as we go along. Another mascara is by Tarte. This is the Lights Camera Lashes. Um, something about it being like, I was traveling with, like I put this in like my, my makeup bag in my purse. It winds up adding a nice layer of mascara layer later in the day, like when you're already wearing mascara. So it was like a good layerer. Um, but I tried using it on its own. I wasn't that impressed neither with its volume nor its, um, lengthening uh, properties. And so take it or leave it. I, I not really worth the money there. Two more mascaras. Uh, this is by Thrive Cosmetics. This is their signature mascara. I like this. I felt like this did a really nice job um, on its own as far as giving you some volume and some length. Nothing crazy either way, but nothing really lacking either way either. Either way either. Um, there's some drama right now about their donation properties and stuff. Um, I gotta be honest. I didn't buy it because they were donating. I buy it. I bought it because everybody was saying it was a really good mascara. So, you know, honestly, when it comes to, I mean, you, you obviously you need to be honest and you're like a shit if you're not honest about that kind of thing. But at that point for something like that, I'm like, you're the one that's got to lay your head down at night and wake up to yourself every morning. And if you feel like you need to lie about what you're donating or not donating, they've defended themselves. Let me just say, uh, you know, I like whatever you charge about the same as, as other mascaras. And, uh, yeah, so I finished it. I that's like a whole debate, honestly, maybe that's a chit chat. We should have a car chat. Um, I liked it though. I think, I believe this is a tube mascara where it's supposed to envelop your lashes. I have no idea, but, um, I wanted to try it. Everybody was talking about it. I did go through and finish it. I have not yet repurchased, um, just because I just wasn't like wowed. Um, I also finished by it cosmetics, the superhero mascara. Uh, I do like this mascara. This is kind of a messy mascara though. Um, and it doesn't layer very well. It gets very clumpy. And then also not even just gets clumpy inside your lashes. Like it leaves little balls of mascara, not like not like a ball ball, but like it just deposits excess in ball-like found formations <laughs> throughout your lashes. Um, but I do like it. It is one of the few mascaras that I can use on its own and not in combination to get some good lengthening as well as some good um, volumizing. So that's a good, that's a good one. That's definitely a good one. Oh my gosh, I have another mascara. Oh, this is also by, or also, no, we haven't had a first one. This is by Benefit. This is the, they're real. Um, oof. I did not finish this one. This is one of those, um, plastic wand applicators and it's got a little pokeball at the very end of it. Um, which I did like when it came to, I mean, there's something to be said for that when you need to go in and get like an individual lash. So like when you, when you hold it pointing at yourself, hopefully you're not going to poke yourself in the eye. Um, but Overall, it just didn't, it didn't wow me. I was happy I tried it. Um, I did not repurchase. Okay, you can't get this next item, but I'm gonna mention it anyway. It's by Bite Beauty. It was their, um, like it was their regular, like shiny lip creams. This is the shade um, Madeira, which was just a really beautiful kind of neutral pink. Um, it's Bite Beauty. So it smells really nice. It's very healthy for you. I suppose if you wanted to take a bite out of this, you could, I think you can. Um, so I went through actually two of these. I have about 10 more because they went on clearance and you can no longer get them. The reason I decided to mention it in this video is because using this product introduced me or not introduced me, reminded me how much I liked Bite Beauty to begin with. And so I very recently um, I think in my last video, the beauty products I'm loving right now, I mentioned how I'm using their matte lip creams right now. And I think they're beautiful as well. And I love the idea of having it in a pencil because I can wear some darker colors, but you can apply so accurately when you're applying a darker shade um, with a pencil instead of just a bullet or a liquid lipstick. And so I mentioned those because I really enjoy the consistency of the lip products of Bite Beauty, as well as their um, agave lip masks, both in the 2B as well as in the bullet. Live for those. Um, 
And so even though you can't get that style of lip pencil anymore, um, or lipstick pencil, I should say, you can still get the matte one, which I think is pretty great. Okay, oh my gosh, I went through another one of those primers by Hylamide. I also squeezed this one like a toothpaste tube, and so that's a really good sign. Um, I actually finished, this was pretty interesting. I actually finished a liquid lipstick. I mentioned this in a monthly favorites or semi recently. This is by Stila. This is the Stay All Day Liquid Lipstick. This is my favorite shade. I love the scent. It's kind of like, it smells like cake, honestly, and I like cake. So, um, just kind of a neutral nude. I use it the way you would use a lip liner. I use it as a lip base and top it with a balm or a lipstick. Um, beautiful, just kind of neutral, doesn't mess up any top colors um, at all. And I actually used up an entire liquid lipstick. Let me say, I hate liquid lipsticks in general, but that is probably one of the most, if not the most comfortable one that I wear. And it winds up drying down so that you're not like transferring anything, but it's like the minimum amount of mattiness so that you don't transfer but then so that you also don't dry the crap out of your lips so that's pretty cool okay i went through an eyeshadow random um this is by bobby brown this is the individual shadow called toasted i want to say it's like i don't know 25 dollars 30 dollars or something obviously you can see the pan is larger than a typical shadow um, I don't know the gram comparison. I just know that by looking at it, it is a little bit larger. Uh, this is my transition shade. Live for this shade. I actually, I'm almost through my second one now and I have, I realized I have two backups. So it's light. So it's not a crease shade per se. I mean, you can, but I use it more as the transi transition shade. Um, and it's just, it's neutral. It's a little bit orangey, a little bit browny. Um, warmer for sure versus cool um but it just i'm i wear it virtually every day so if you're ever looking at my eyes you can pretty much bet a small winning lotto ticket that i am wearing toasted by bobby brown um i went through one of the hourglass minis um this is the ambient lighting powder in diffused light i was i bought it as a mini because you know how you like never go through a highlighter um i bought it as a mini to use it to set my under eyes and then I realized I liked it so much that I did buy a full size. Um, and I actually use the full size to, as a final step, like a um, finishing powder to add a little luminosity to my face when I'm done, since I typically spend most of my makeup routine mattifying myself. Um, but then I do focus it underneath my eyes. Um, if I'm using a really light concealer, like already one or two shades lighter um, than my foundation, I will just dust that ever so slightly, but if I'm wearing a, um, an under eye concealer that is close to my natural shade or to my foundation shade, you can go a little heavier with that because it's still super fine, but it will brighten your under eye. So you can have um, a concealer that's neutral for you, but then brighten it up with that under eye setting powder. Um, I have, I do like product brow products by Benefit. I have a mini of the Gimme Brow. I am in the shade three. I love this. Love, love, love. I don't live for the packaging. It's a little bit hard to maneuver. They could have made it bigger packaging, but whatever. Um, and the way I do my brows now is I will actually comb this through first so that it adheres to my hairs because it's like the fibrous, you know, kind of brow mascara. Um, and then when it comes to using pencil, I barely need to then go in and draw in lines just to kind of fill in a couple of spaces and it actually then makes doing my brows so nice and easy i promise you this is the last mascara this is by mac this is the extended play giga black lash mascara i've heard this is also a tube mascara um meaning it encircles your lashes i use this on the under eye under the under eye no not actually the under eye my lower lash line um this has a very friendly lower lash line brush and because it's a tube mascara, for those of you who have mascara that kind of um, smears under your eyes, maybe based on the design of your eyes or how oily or not your eyes may get, um, that tends to stay in place pretty darn well. Um, I went through a fresh um, sugar lipstick. This is the one that, uh, like lip balm. This is the shade, oh, it smells so good. This is the shadeless one. This is a close runner up to the 
um, Bite Beauty Agave lip mask in the bullet as well. I have traveled with both of them. This one melts in the summer. So this is definitely a winter traveler. But oh, it's just so beautiful when it moisturizes your lips. It is a little bit thicker than, for example, the Laneige lip mask, which I wasn't impressed with, but whatever. Um, I find that does a much nicer job of moisturizing while also staying on my lips for longer than, I don't know, 25 seconds. The last thing I have, how are we doing on time? The last thing that I have is by Laura Mercier, the Translucent Loose Setting Powder. I finished most of this. Um, I, I don't use this. I used to set my under eyes until I became educated on YouTube because I couldn't figure out why my under eyes were looking a little dry because this is a little bit of a drying, oil absorbing sort of powder. Sometimes if I'm feeling it, I will set kind of the rest of my face um, or my oily, I should say, I will set my oilier areas of my face. Typically, I can't be bothered with loose powder, um, but I hate the release of loose powder when you're just coming out the holes, you know, up in the top. So I finished, when I say I finished most of it, even though the container is empty, I took the last empty container that I had of the Becca Hydra Mist set, Hydra Mist and Set Powder, um, the one that felt wet when you would put it on that no longer felt wet, even though you weren't actually done with the product, which is what pissed me off about it and made me so disappointed in it, even though I thought it was a fabulous setting powder. But it has a net. Instead of the pokey holes, it has a net that releases the um, the powder. And so I popped that bad boy open. I put the rest of my Laura Mercier powder in there, put a little sticky note on it that said, this is not Becca, this is Laura Mercier. And I'm much more inclined than to use a beautiful loose powder um, now that I've got a better kind of release mechanism and storage container for that loose powder. That's it, you guys. That was a lot of stuff. I still have a whole full other drawer of all of the non-makeup empties. Are you interested in seeing that? Please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video or you enjoy empties videos in general, please give this video a thumbs up. Uh, please find me on Instagram. I get silly over there sometimes. Um, I do thank you for spending your time with me. I hope that you're having a great holiday season. I hope you have a good rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. In the meantime, thanks.